I'm Michael Caplet. I'm an associate professor and vice chairman of the Department for Research in Neurological Surgery. I'm also the Victor and Tara Manessis Clinical Scholar in Neurosurgery and the director of the Laboratory of Molecular Neurosurgery and the director of the Movement Disorder and Stereotactic Neurosurgery Program at Cornell. I always had a passion for science. I did a little project when I was in uh, junior high school trying to use earthworms to figure out why people get heart disease because earthworms don't normally get heart disease so I fed them all kinds of terrible things to see if they would develop heart disease and surprisingly they did. I can see a little bleed through now. To me, research has always been an integral part of what I do. If people would try to press me, well, which do I prefer, medicine or research, I would say I can't choose. My major contribution has been the development of the idea of gene therapy for the neurological system, specifically in functional diseases like Parkinson's disease. So we need to think about how we're going to do this protein stress business. Parkinson's is a particularly cruel disease. While there are about 5% of patients do inherit the disease because of rare genetic alterations or mutations. 95% of patients just get the disease and they have no real family history and no way of knowing that they're going to get it. What's available to patients today, we have a device called a deep brain stimulation device. This involves placing a thin wire into the middle of the circuit that regulates movement. When these little electrical pulses are delivered, it can regulate the flow of information in that circuit in a way that will help normalize the information to the rest of the brain and improve many of these symptoms. With deep brain stimulation, we can usually reduce the amount of medication they're taking on average by about 50%. So this is the, the dapping or which? That's how we developed our gene therapy approach, which was to base it on what we know works, which is deep brain stimulation. Using gene therapy, instead of putting in an electrode, we put in a gene to change the way those cells function, to change the way they signal other parts of the brain that they connect with, to try to normalize the entire signaling pathway and the entire neurochemical balance, the chemical balance of the different parts of the brain that affect movement in Parkinson's disease with this single genetic modification of this one area. The results of our study were very encouraging to suggest that this could be very effective, that patients had a significant improvement in all of their classic Parkinson's symptoms. So this is just the immunostaining? It was the first time anybody had put a gene into the brain of an adult human being for anything to try to change the way their brain functions and improve disease. Recently, we just received federal approval to start the next phase, the so-called phase two study for our gene therapy approach, which will involve a larger number of patients that was very exciting and that's where we're at right now and that's, that's moving forward. The other major area that I treat is complex pain. Pain is a, sort of an early warning signal of our body to tell us that something is wrong. And if we can figure out what the pain is telling us, it's like if your alarm goes off in your car, you don't ignore it, you fix it. There are all kinds of things that can cause malfunctioning of nerves that can cause pain, ongoing pain, that cannot be fixed any other way. And if that does not respond well to medicine, and people should always have a good trial of, of medicine and usually multiple medications before considering a surgical procedure for their pain. But for those patients that fail those things, we can go in and try to put in devices that are similar to the brain stimulation devices, but that instead get put on the spinal cord and send little electrical pulses to the spinal cord to try to interrupt the pain signal from getting to the brain and stop the pain. There are other types of pain that are more sort of aching, twisting, agonizing type pain. That's a different type of pain that usually comes from people who have had um, uh, what's called failed back syndrome, let's say, where they've had spine surgeries for their back and it's not helped and they have this terrible agonizing back pain. Patients who have cancer pain, sometimes if people have cancer, it can cause severe agonizing pain deep in the organs and in other places in the body. Those types of pain can often be helped with a different device called a spinal pump where we put a little tube into the spinal fluid in the back and the tube goes onto the spinal cord and that will pump out drugs onto the spinal cord directly. It depends on what your risks are for surgery, what your comfort level is, which of these procedures you choose, but we do all of them here um, and for the right patient these can be extraordinarily effective and life-changing operation.